the blessing of Abraham has come upon you for the purpose of you having the, the lifestyle and the conditions that Abraham was able to unlock through obeying God. The blessing of Abraham is really King Jesus able to reveal to you the benefits of the cross. So when we look at the blessing of Abraham is really the benefits of the cross being revealed in the new covenant. Remember Abraham was blessed in uh, Genesis, but the blessing of Abraham has a fresh wave to it in the new covenant for the sake of the new covenant believers. So in the blessing of Abraham is all type of financial moves of God. Abraham was going through a lot of financial moves. So financially, the spirit of God was taking him from one place to the next. And it was all by divine design. And Abraham experienced the Lord getting things to him through different ways. It wasn't the normality of everybody else's life. He became very rich, which means that he was not only in finances, but he was very rich in finances. Very rich means that it's not just the money is there, the provision is there, but it means that he has plenty of it. It's overflowing. Now, Galatians chapter three, verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law, being made cursed, being made a curse for you, for it is written, curses the one that hangs upon a tree. Then Galatians 3, 14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon you through Christ Jesus, that you might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Now, look, Look at what is operating through uh, Jesus. Jesus on the cross is the portal for the blessing of Abraham. Now, what was Jesus to see? What the father gave so that the whole world could be reconciled to him. Now, look, here's the seed on the cross. And through the seed, the blessing of Abraham is the channel of this seed. The seed is channeling the blessing of Abraham. Look, Galatians chapter three is showing you that the seed that God sold, his best seed, is channeling the blessing of Abraham. Now the blessing of Abraham is carrying all type of advantages increases, favors, abundance. Now look at this. Now we see Jesus as the seed where all of these blessings that Abraham has been authorized by the father to release to you, now they're coming through Jesus while he's on the cross. He lays down his life, he becomes sin, now, I want you to catch this. So every time the Holy Ghost is seed sowing, the blessing of Abraham is channeling through that seed. When a person becomes a seed sower, they're doing what the father did with his son. And they are now channeling the blessing through their seed. The father got the blessing of Abraham to come to you. It cometh to you through his best seed. So the father had to sow for the blessing of Abraham to get to you. So you rob God if you don't want to sow but you want the blessing of Abraham because the blessing of Abraham was even achievable, accessible because of sowing from the father. 
The father used the idea of sowing to channel the rich life to you. So you got to use sowing to receive the channel of the rich life. The seed is a remote control. You turn to the channel of how your life is supposed to be going when you're sowing. Now, saints, I'm going to tell you like this here. The seed is so powerful that if, if you're not in a place where you're supposed to be, the seed will allow chaos to enter into your life until you get there. The seed is so powerful that when you become a sower, you, you sow into God's soul. And God's soul is really his mindset. That's why when you start sowing, your, your perspective change about people. When you start sowing, your perspective start changing about situations. That's why I told you nobody could follow Jesus without becoming a sower. Because you're going to have to honor him so that you could keep on receiving a fresh supply of where his soul is today. His soul is not always in the same place. He's not always in the same place. So the soul of God could change up. One year, we see the Lord, um, he's about to judge Ahab. And then the next year, look, now Elijah comes to him with the word and it, Ahab starts fasting, humbles himself, and God says, go back to him and tell him I'm not going to do what I said I was going to do during his time. He's not going to see it. Now, what went on there? God's soul is not in the same place. Hezekiah. God said, you're about to die. He turns his face to the wall. God tells Isaiah, go back to Hezekiah and tell him I add on 15 more years to his life. We see the soul switch of God. I'm about to destroy these people. Moses labors, intercedes. God says, okay, I spare them. The soul switches of God. All throughout the word of God, we see that God's soul is not always in the same place. It's not always in the same uh, pondering. His soul travels. So when you become a seed sower, you're sowing into the soul of God. Therefore, you could match him where he currently is. This is a part of you having accuracy with the voice of God. You have to sow. Because if you're not connected to him where he is today, you very well could be Eli. Former glory carrier. But currently, your status is wicked because there's no connectivity. God made the seed so that you could plug into his mindset. Riches and wealth is easy for God. It's already planned for you when you're a sower. But these are things that are major that you're going to need so that when you do become wealthy and you become rich, you have abundance that your mind is what's going to matter. Because you're going to have the money. You can't sow money into the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost not give you money in multiplied fashion. So you're going to be rich. You're going to be wealthy. That's not nothing that you need to... Uh, you don't have to take five hours to try to contemplate that and understand it. That's already a definite. But what is really important is will your soul... Um, become a recipient of the stream of God's soul, you want your soul to become one with his because you're going to need his mindset when you're sowing. You can't ever allow money to become where you invest your trust. The Bible said in Timothy not to put your trust in on, uh, on certain riches. I believe that's uh, Timothy chapter 6. Talked about not paying your trust in uncertain riches. Your net, but keep your trust in the living God. And then Deuteronomy 8.18 is saying, remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth. So it's telling you that you got to remember that money is not there just because. Money is there because God gave you a supernatural power for the money to come to you. 
for the money to locate you. The power to get wealth is God giving you a supernatural power for money to find you. Imagine God has a reserved circuit of power where he causes money to locate his loved ones. A sower is a cheerleader for God. He plants on them the raw anointing because they will be entrusted to know his secrets. So he prepares them to wear and be a carrier of his secrets. He places a raw anointing on a sower because he wants them to continue cheering him on as he reveals himself to them. You don't know everything about God. You don't know everything about God. He reveals himself as you advance in the sowing anointed. You have to also remember this. Everybody that you see that say, Lord, Lord is not a sower. When you get around people that are not consistent sowers, there's a, there's a realm of error that they operate in. Some of the stuff that they tell you is correct. But if you keep on listening to someone that don't consistently sow into the Lord, you'll recognize that their doctrine and philosophy is off. They'll talk with you for a minute. You're like, yeah, yeah. And then you'll get this eerie feeling. And then you'll start hearing them say some bullshit. You know why they start going off into that BS? Because they don't honor God. And if they do, it's not constant. So they don't, they don't, they don't carry a level of understanding. They don't carry a level of righteousness. They carry realms of error. And saying so, uh, when people are in error, they say certain things that's correct. But if you weigh them out, you'll be like, no, nah, that's not correct. No, nah, no, nah, something not adding up here. Exactly. Something not adding up there because that's a, that's a, that's a thief. People that rob God, they are not qualified to have conversations with you at the realm that you're in while you're honoring God. Because a sower has advanced access to God's current mindset. The brilliance of God is dropped into the sower. The brilliance of God is dropped into the sower. He deposits fresh ideas to a seed sower. Remember, when you're sowing, you're sowing into God's soul. His soul is his mind, his word, his doctrine, his teaching. When you sow, you're sowing into his word. In Luke chapter eight, these certain women, they not only were sowing, but they had a mantle on them for reaping. That's why they was able to keep on sowing. They was uh, carriers of prosperity. They wore the prosperity mantle and they believed their prophet. Their prophet was Jesus. Seed sowing has a return to it. It's not you just giving God out of the kindness of your heart. God going to give back to you out of the kindness of his heart. And he doesn't return the seed back in the same amount that it was sown. He brings the seed at a greater bracket because he wants to show you that his system can take care of you. That's the whole, that's the whole obsession of God is to impress you. When God made Adam, he gave him the earth bearing seed because he wanted to impress Adam. He wanted to show Adam, look, Adam, I'm God. Beside me, there's nobody else. Dang, my teeth white. I'm God. <laughs> that wasn't, I just added that one in. I'm God. And beside me, there's no other. You know, you know this what the spirit of God was doing. He was hovering over the waters even before Adam had showed up. He was waiting to impress somebody. 
When God made man, he wanted to, he wanted to show his muscles off. Look at me. I'm God. Worship me. I'll take care of you. Worship me. I'll make your life a living heaven. Worship me. I'll make sure that you're good. The Lord was using the creation of Adam to express his ego. Finally, he had somebody that he could share his wealth with. As they saw, they would reap the loveliness of God, the comeliness of God, the beautifulness of God, the beauty of God, they were going to become recipients of harvests. Saints, did you know that a harvest really means I finally get a chance to share my stuff with somebody? That's what Jehovah God was thinking. We're going to go part two in this, the last broadcast to uh, this. This going to be the last broadcast of, of this, um, this evening. 